Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, but this time I'm going to be doing it on Dueling Book because I don't own any of the Yang Zing cards at this moment. Well, except for like a foreign box here, but that's besides the point. Basically, I've been messing around a lot with a lot more rogue decks as of recently because I've been taking Yu-Gi-Oh! a bit less seriously than I have in the past, and one of the decks that I went to experiment with when I was looking through like my older videos and older deck lists from like previous Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro clients and stuff like that was Metal Foes Yang Zing, and I was like, huh... I wonder how this deck can function and if the combos can be sort of fixed and adjusted for Postmaster Rule 4. And it turns out, actually the deck has some very significant plays that it can make turn 1 with the old, you know, Metal Foe plus 3 Yang Zing hands that it's still very potent in terms of the in boards that it puts out, even without Ding Long and even under Master Rule 4 just completely changing the way that we have to play our extra deck spam strategies. So, this is a play that you obviously have to have Crystron Needle Fiber for, but it is something that we could potentially get in the future rather soon, but if you're one of those people that, kind of like me, just doesn't really care some of the times and just goes on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro or Dueling Book and just plays with OCG cards, then this is something you can mess around with as well, because this, what I'm about to show you, is a card combo that requires uh, these four cards that you see on screen, a Metal Foes Monster plus any three Yang Zing cards, as long as one of them is a Normal Summonable Floater, or is just Jiao Tu itself. And what it ends with is it ends with an ending board that ends with a plus three to card economy, and you have four disruptions against your opponent. Now, considering this is a rogue deck that's been hit by the ban list and hit by Master Rule 4, that's very impressive that this deck is doing things and operating on a capacity of, you know, negation output that is identical to World Chalice, a link-based strategy made to flourish under Master Rule 4, or Pendulum Magicians in our current format, which end on three to four disruptions with their best hands. So, like, that's that's pretty impressive to me. So I figured I would show you the combo that uh, that I messed around with, and it's uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's just, it's I've seen no one cover anything with this deck since, like, Master Rule 4 really heavily hindered the deck. I've seen no coverage on any new combos with it. I could just be looking in the wrong places, but regardless. This is the combo that I have come up with for myself to utilize to get to four interruptions. So, what you're going to do is you're going to scale your Metal Foes card and you're going to Normal Summon your Floater, use your Metal Foes card to pop your Yang Zing, and set your Metal Foes combination from your deck to your Spell and Trap card zone, and in this case our BN will trigger to Special Summon our Jiao Tu from our deck. Now at this point, Jiao Tu can be used, and you'll discard the two Yang Zing cards out of your hand, and from here you're specifically going to summon Chi Win and Zephyr Nui from your deck. Now, uh, this is cool. Uh, specifically because we don't have to worry about where Chi Win is for the combo anymore because of Needle Fiber and Links in general. We used to have to worry about uh, like Chi Win in the aspect of if it was in our hand and we were discarding it for Jiao Tu, that changed what our ending combo board could be. But now it doesn't matter that much. Now we basically just summon it off Jiao Tu and we link away with it, which is what we're about to do right now. So what you do is you get rid of Chi Win and the Jiao Tu and you are going to link into Crystron Needle Fiber, because it just requires two monsters with at least one of them being a tuner. These are both tuners, but that doesn't really matter. So, from here you're going to summon Crystron Needle Fiber, and Needle Fiber's effect is going to special summon another Jiao Tu from the deck. Now, it could be either another Jiao Tu or another Chi Win. No, it has to be another Jiao Tu at this point. I'm skipping ahead steps in my mind. You summon another Jiao Tu here because you want to make Boxia. You want to make Boxia with our Zephyr Nui that is on the board, so we will do just that. And I'm going to summon the Boxia all the way over to the right, just so it saves space on the board for future Link Summon possibilities, as well as, you know, it just stays out of the way. So you're not going to spin your own cards, obviously, but you are going to use Boxia's effect to pop the face-down combination, and you're going to bring back any monster from your grave that floats, just so that we can utilize its effect. Now, Chi Win, we don't care if it floats this turn. Uh, because it's not going to be using, we're not going to be using it to revive itself this turn. So we'll special summon the Chi Win from Grave, and then at this point, Metal Foes combination is going to activate to search another scale. Now, at this point, you're just going to grab an opposite scale from what you have. At this point, we have a Silvered, so we're going to go for an eight scale, and Bismagear is just like the best one to get because you could possibly pop it and get a search for the end of your turn. So we'll activate this, and we'll use it to pop the Chi Win we just brought back, and set Metal Foes combination from our deck to our Spell and Trap card zone again and then the chi win will trigger its floating effect to special summon a monster from our deck and in this case we're going to special summon the third jiao tu so this combo runs through all three jiao tus uh, 
and you want to make sure you don't do what I just did, and you want to summon it in the zone next to the zone that Needle Fiber is pointing to. You want to leave this zone open. You want to summon it either here, here, or here. I thought I clicked here, but apparently I clicked here. <laughs> Oops. You basically just want this zone open because we're about to pendulum summon the Zephyr Nui from the Astro deck. Now, with this combo sequence, we're about to pendulum summon one, and you may think, wow, pendulum summon one, that's a really weak pendulum summon, but it's actually just not. It's exactly what we need. We don't really need anything more. Like, that's actually just the truth. So you pendulum the Zephyr Nui from the Extra Deck into the zone the Needle Fiber is pointing to, and the Zephyr Nui then will trigger, searching for nine pillars of the Yang Zing. Now, if you already just have this in your hand, you could search for a second copy of it and have multiple, you know, negations with it, or you could search for Yang Zing Path to try and draw two cards and maybe draw into hand traps, or just draw into another nine pillars and see if you can get lucky. There's a few different things you can do. But basically, you're always going to be at least trying to end on one nine pillars, because that's the entire point. But so from here, you've got the Zephyr Nui and the Jiao Tu back on the board. So you're going to synchro with these again into another Boxia. And so Boxia here, you're not going to spin your cards again. And then you're going to use Boxia's effect again to pop the combination. And you're going to bring back any card in your graveyard that's a Yang Zing that floats and isn't Chi Win or Bian. Because you want Chi-Win to stay in your grave, and you want, if you have a BN in your grave, you don't want to summon it because you want to be able to float into BN, and none of the Yang Zings can float into their same name. So, at this point, the safest one to just bring back is Jiao Tu, honestly. Because Jiao Tu has the biggest defense points of, you know, most of the floaters that we would have access to. Bixie also has 2,000 defense, if I remember correctly. Uh, but basically, you just want to summon it because we're done with it for the turn. We're not going to be synchroing with it anymore. And just having it on the field to float on the opponent's turn is perfectly fine to have. And so this Metal Foes combination that went to Grave is going to trigger, and it is going to search us another Metal Foes card. It doesn't really matter what you get. Uh, like, it just, it, it really doesn't. There's no real benefit to it other than it's just another Pendulum Monster in your hand. But from here, our board is pretty much set up to go into... The end game. That is not what I want. I want this to go there. And what you're going to do is you're going to overlay the two boxes into number 38, Hope Harboring Your Dragon Titanic Galaxy, in defense mode. Very important, especially if we're still playing under the current Pendulum Magician format, because if Purple Poison is relevant, your opponent will be able to normal summon Purple Poison and attack into whatever attack position monster you have to try and destroy it and pop whatever cards you have that are disruption pieces. But if you put Titanic Galaxy in defense mode, you get to redirect the attack of the Purple Poison, or whatever monster for that matter, into Titanic Galaxy's 2500 defense points. They take some damage, but the Purple Poison is not destroyed by battle because it was attacking a defense position monster, and thusly they can't use it to pop cards. That's pretty important, that's why we do that in the Pendulum Magician Mirror Match in the current format. Well, I say current. Current as of when this video went out. But so from here, all you're going to do is you're going to set the Nine Pillars of the Yang Zing, and you're going to pass turn. Now, ultimately, this board may not look like much in terms of board presence, especially compared to the old Metal Foes Yang Zing combos we were used to doing, where we were used to going into, like, Titanic Galaxy, Void Ogre, uh, having, like, Arclight on the field already, and having Nine Pillars set with it live. But this is actually just as decent as everything else that's going on in the metagame right now, because this is four disruptions, and it's not even just, like, four disruptions in the form of, like, oh, you have one negation card, and then two to three cards that pop things. No, you actually have three negation cards and then one card that pops things. So, you've got the Titanic Galaxy, which is a spell negator, which you can use whenever. It doesn't matter when you use it. But you have this Nine Pillars of the Yang Zing, which, if you don't know what it does, it negates a spell trap or monster effect, completely unrestricted, basically. And then it pops your Yang Zing on the field when it's done. So this card negates any card in Yu-Gi-Oh, essentially, with very minor exception. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use this as one of your earlier negations, like one of the first card or two that your opponent plays, you're going to want to use Nine Pillars on before you use Needle Fiber's effect. Specifically so that you can make your second negate off of the Nine Pillars before you get rid of the zone Needle Fiber provides. What do I mean by that? I mean, if your opponent plays a card, you're going to play the Nine Pillars and you're going to destroy the Jiao Tu after you negate their card. And then the Jiao Tu is going to trigger to float from your deck, to summon a monster from your deck. And then the Chi Win in your grave is going to trigger because a Yang Zing monster was destroyed. So Chi Win is going to special summon itself from graveyard as Chain Link 2, so this plays around Ash as well on your opponent's turn, if that was like the card they top decked. 
And then you're going to use the Jiaotu that was destroyed to flow into Bian from your deck. And now from here, immediately after these hit the board, you can use Bian's effect to immediately synchro summon on your opponent's main phase. And you're going to synchro with the Chiwen and the Bian into Herald of the Arclight into the zone that the Needle Fiber is pointing to. And so now Bian is on the Herald of the Arclight, so it can't be destroyed by battle, but it was already being battle protected by Hope Harbinger, so it's sort of double protected in that regard. But Herald of the Arclight is a pseudo macrocosmos when on the field, depending on where the cards are going from, they get banished. And then it also has an effect of it can also just be tributed to negate a spell trap or monster effect activation. So this card is a basically another copy of Nine Pillars that you got to make for free because you activated Nine Pillars. So you have Nine Pillars that negates a spell trap or monster effect, a negate anything card, that summons another negate anything card. So that's two cards that negate anything your opponent plays. You have a spell negator, and then the last form of disruption you have is you can tag Needle Fiber out on your opponent's turn by tributing it and summoning TG Wonder Magician from your extra deck into the extra monster zone where Needle Fiber was. When TG Wonder Magician is summoned, Synchro Summoned, which Needle Fiber treats it as a Synchro Summon, you target a spell or trap on the field and destroy that target. So if your opponent plays a Pendulum Scale, if your opponent plays like Dragonic Diagram, or if your opponent sets some back row and ends their turn, you can do all of these sorts of things. And so, basically, with this Yang Zing combo, you've generated the same number of negates, sometimes more negates than what the best deck in the format, Pendulum Magician, is currently doing. Their more common boards end on three negations, or not even three negations, three disruptions. Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon, Hope Harbinger, and uh, like a Firewall Dragon or a uh, Jackal. Uh, and then like the four card and five card combo hands make all four of those happen. So like, you're doing the exact same sort of things that the Pendulum Magician deck being the best deck in the format is doing, just in a slightly different way. And that's very good for a rogue deck, especially one like this, where the Yangzing cards are inherently pretty cheap, and you get a good amount of value from them if that's something you wanted to invest into, because if you decided not to play this all-or-nothing combo deck, you could just take the Metal Flows cards out, slim down on the Yangzing count, and play traps and hand traps and play a stun variant. So you get a lot of mileage out of the cards that you are investing into for this deck. So, it's a really cool thing. I didn't think that it would function nearly as well as it does under Master Rule 4, but it's literally just fixed by Needle Fiber. And again, I've seen nobody talking about it or discussing it, because apparently people just don't want to, like, try and touch these decks that they say that they like really much. Like, they, they don't want to touch these decks they say they really like, and they're fixable, and they're addressable to at least be, you know, playable on a locals or maybe regional roguish level. But they just don't want to mess with it, so... I felt like messing with it, and this is this is the result. This is the very simple combo you can do. There's a few variations on this you can do as well, but I'm not going to get into those for this video because the video is already 12 minutes long as it is. So anyway, let me know what you guys think about that in the comments down below. Sorry it took so long, but that's kind of just how it happens when you're doing intricate things on Dueling Book, unfortunately. But I don't have the cards in person. If I did, I could probably have made it a little bit faster because I could move cards around faster than Dueling Book servers allow me to do. But I digress. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, as I may have already said. As always, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Check out the links in the description to my Facebook, my Twitch. If you want to catch live streams that I do semi-regularly, then definitely go check that out and drop a follow over there so you get notified when the next live stream happens, where I play viewers and stuff. But other than that, if you want to support the channel, you can also check out the Patreon link in the description down below. But other than that, as always, guys, as I've already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time as usual, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.